Hey, and welcome to SAP Tech Bytes. My name is Kevin Musik. I'm a developer advocate for SAP. And today I want to show you how to build a CAP project having multiple endpoints. The endpoints we're going to implement uh, are OData v4, OData v2, and just regular REST. So let's get started. All right, uh, what we see here is the SAP BGP cockpit. And uh, in here under applications, I already have my advocate service um, sort of up and running. So if we click on that URL here, we will end up on my service um, overview page with, with the different endpoints. So if we click down here on metadata, we should get the OData v4 service um, metadata document. We can do uh, get the v2 as well. So we just punch up here, we just punch in v2 dash, uh, slash uh, applicants metadata, and we get the v2 service. So we can see this here, data service version two. All right, how do we get the rest? The same way, we have our service endpoints here, and uh, we drill, for example, into members, and we get some members back in a JSON response from our REST endpoint. So that's cool, it's up and running, and it's working. So how did I do this? Uh, for that, we open up Visual Studio Code, and I'm not going to live code this, but I walk you through the project itself. So I have a basic CAP um, project structure here, and I created a service.cds file defining my entities, members, skills, members uh, to skills, which is a join table in social media presence. And I also got a schema using managed SAP on uh, CUID um, for using the UID and the managed entities building together that service. So this is just basic um, CAP schema definition. So if you want to learn more about this, you can go to the CAP documentation or to developers.sap.com. There are like plenty of tutorials and information out there how to build that standard CAP service. The interesting part here is how did I get the different endpoints? And the magic here lies in the server.js file. And the server.js file is under the server folder. And everything we code in here will change the bootstrapping of CAP, or we can actually invoke our own fun functions into the, the bootstrapping process of the CAP service. So we can do that by saying cds.on bootstrap, so recognizing the bootstrap, and then executing the code we want to change in the bootstrapping process. Um, first of all, let's just take a quick look on uh, the modules we're using. So of course, we're using CDS, uh, core data service. And we're using core data service OData v2 adapter proxy for the um, OData v2 um, service endpoint. And in here, we basically just say, and you can just ignore the course here for, uh, for a moment. We say our REST URL will be slash REST slash. And then from here, let's just take this away and put that in here. Um, so yeah, from here, we go in and just basically say CDS serve the advocate service um, from using the season file here, um, which gets generated when you when you build your, your cap service and uh, put that to a REST endpoint with my REST URL slash advocates in our app, and then we catch some errors, and then just basically say CDS serve and do in module exports. Same thing, or not the same thing, but uh, a similar easy way of using the V2 or data is just using the proxy. So we can just create a new proxy with a path V2, and we've seen that uh, before when I punched in v2 in the URL and then just say um, use the advocate service with that URL and expose the whole thing on, on that OData v2 proxy and that's it. So the um, 
and that space is actually wrong here. Uh, for the usage of AppGyver, and I will have a separate video and blog post about this, uh, we have to enable the course, um, so the cross origin, uh, um, we have to allow that and whitelist the AppGyver URL, or in, our, in that case, because it's for testing purpose only, we just whitelist everything. Uh, for some reason, the AppGyver tool needs that to be enabled um, so it can access um, your REST data endpoint. And uh, with that, this is pretty much done. So this is all the code you need for those three endpoints to be up and running in your uh, CAP service. Uh, I've done the database hookup before and all of that, but let's take a look in the MTA YAML real quick. So here, we just got some metadata information for the CDS service and our commands npm install npx cds build because we first of all want to install all the needed packages um, while the service gets deployed uh, so we don't have to uh, download them beforehand, package them in our MTA and upload all the downloaded packages with it. So the next thing is having the server module defined. So the server module, its name is Advocate Service uh, SRV uh, for server. And I've showed you that here. This is um, this application here. And uh, this is basically just saying this is a Node.js application and we got some memory we want to use. We got some disk quota and this is my host. And it also requires the uh, Advocate Service database because it has a database connection. And um, we ignoring a couple of build parameters, uh, we're ignoring a couple of generated files here just to reduce the file size of our um, mtar later on. The th uh, same thing for the DB module. So this is um, defining the database deployer. The database deployer starts up for a second just to uh, um, get into the HDI container and deploy our database schema and all of that beautiful things into our HDI con uh, container. And after that, the, uh, the DB deployer just shuts down uh, and, and is not consuming any resources anymore. But here again, it's using the Node.js build pack and uh, it is an HDB type and with the name Advocate Service DB and that's, just going to be, I'm showing to that to you here. Um, let's go into my dev space, and then we got the service. But in, under instances, we have the advocate service database, and this is our SAP HANA schemas and HDI containers. Uh, that's where it's all running. So the stuff here comes straight out of the HDI container, straight out of, out of our HANA database. And um, all the way down here, which is basically saying uh, what kind of resources we're going to use. And that's all you got to do. Um, really, it's all you got to do. The next thing we want to do is, um, of course, we want to deploy that whole thing. So we package that into an mtar. You can download the uh, MBT build tool um for that and um in the root of your project you just say mtb uh, build and it's going to build a new mtar file so uh before we do that let's just go into the uh mta yaml and increase the version here so i can show you the deploy uh, the db deployer popping up later on so we just say mtb build and this might take a while so we just uh, watch that in peace here. So here we can see we got an advocate service 1.0.6 mtar, and that we can push to the Cloud Foundry runtime on BTP uh, via the com uh, command line interface for Cloud Foundry. So let's do this. So first of all, make sure you're locked into the Cloud Foundry endpoints. So here, let's just do this. And we just select the org, we got that. And now we can say CF, deploy, and then the path to our mtar and hit return. So 
and that's it. So the service is back on deployed. You can see if we refresh that, we're still getting data back. Um, here we got my SAP HANA database instance. So let's just open that whole thing in the database explorer. And just quickly take a look at the database itself. So you can see we got the advocate service DB here um, that got deployed by our deployment. And we see our tables, the members, members to skill, uh, skills, skills, social media presence. And we can just open the data and we should see our raw data of that table. And uh, there we go. So we can see all the information um, we get through the service from here. And that actually allows us to, for example, use AppGyver um, and uh, create a connection to that service. And I've done that here in the Advocates app example um to to build a ui on top of, of our service and an application so here as you can see i've added this advocate service pointing to the members let's just get rid of that because that's just a base url and let's save it and then we can have a get collection here and we can say slash members and then just double check, yep, let's just run that test. And you can see we got a response back from our service with the data from the HANA database. And uh, we can now set the scheme to response. We got all of that in here. So we save that. And now we can actually start um, building our UI on top of that um, data endpoint. And that would be the same way for a UI5 app or an iOS app or whatever. So with that, you, you can start connecting to that service and, uh, and building applications, microservices, serverless functions, whatever you want to do, um, connecting against that. And you've got all the freedom of having all these different endpoints. And later on, at some point when we want to establish authentication for XSUAA, we just got to define the routes for what the authentication is valid. And um, then the cap um, will take care of that for us. So that's it with today's SAP Tech Bytes video episode. And what you've learned is how to create a multi endpoint cap service um, exposing an Odata v4, v2, and the rest endpoint in just a couple of lines of code. And um, if you follow that series, uh, um, there's also a blog post series behind that video series of Tech Bytes videos. Um, you will you will learn a lot more how to evolve that service, how to build different UIs on top of that service, like a native iOS app. Uh, with Swift UI and the SAP BTP SDK for iOS, as well as an AppGyver app. Um, and later on, also using the SAP BTP Kima runtime for uh, an object store to actually provide profile images of each of our SAP advocates. So stay tuned, follow the blog posts, and follow that SAP Tech Bytes video series, and also Watch all the other great videos in that playlist and on the SAP Devs YouTube channel. See you next time.